interesting place to start this conversation from is from the point of asking ourselves this question what is analytics before we can actually look at hr analytics it's critical for us to understand what analytics is in general and talking about that uh without data according to edward deming he says without data you're just another person with an opinion we are doing in essence in this class is to say we are trying to gather data because if i share an opinion and say that everybody does data analysis it's everybody begins to feel that oh maybe it's an opinion but now that i've done a poll and i've actually been able to share that poll result to say 27 percent have done data analysis in their current role often uh, occasionally 37 percent really 38 percent at that point what i'm doing is that i am sharing and i'm sharing based on a data source now uh the next conversation now is when we're talking about analysis or analytics in itself analytics has to do in layman's term can be defined as the analysis of data to draw hidden insights to aid decision making take for example i need to purchase a phone and i need to make a decision as to the type of phone i am going to purchase now in trying to arrive at that decision i would need to analyze what do i need in a phone that's the very first thing i will be considering then i'll consider the memory size of the phone then i will go ahead and start to look at things around uh what's the what's the camera size what's the front facing camera what's the selfie camera at that point what i'm doing is to gather information now when we look at it with respect to businesses with respect to human resources and you need to make an informed decision that is not based on opinion that is not based on gut feeling then at that point you need to gather data to be able to do that so when we talk about hr analytics in itself if we are to give a simple definition of hr analytics we're saying hr analytics is a data-driven approach to managing people at work hr analytics is a data-driven uh, approach to managing people now when you are managing people and you are not doing that based on gut feeling what you're doing is data or hr analytics so when you apply analytics into human resources we call it hr analytics some other names that are given to it is talking about talent analytics or people analytics or workforce analytics so according to ai in hr it defines hr analytics also known as people analytics workforce analytics talent analytics it revolves around analyzing people problems using data to answer critical questions about your organization so if you are to decide whether individuals as covid has made the work from home to be embraced at the moment and you need to make a decision when covid is over should we as an organization continue to do work from home for you to be able to make that decision you will most likely going to deploy a survey a survey that would ask the question should we deploy work from home continually at that point what you're trying to do is to elicit data is to get data from your employees of taking a decision should we continue to do work from home after post covid what you're trying to do at that point is you're trying to take a data driven approach to solve the problem at hand the major reason why individuals and organizations tend to do employee engagement is to be able to get data to be able to agree in this in, in, uh, to be able to come to a conclusion to know how hr practices are favoring the employees so according to cipd they said similarly also hr analytics has to do with people analytics in the the use of people data taking a people data approach uh to be able to solve uh people data when you take a data-driven approach to manage individuals within the organization to manage the employees now the conversation now comes to mind 
what do we mean by hr data what do we mean by hr data now what that means is this hr data are pieces of information relating to an employee such as age gender date of birth uh, date of employment and all like that now interestingly is this there are two main types of data there is what we call quantitative data that's numerical data usually objective and there is qualitative data Qual qualitative data has to do with categorical data or subjective in nature so an example of a quantitative data is your age your age is quantitative because it is defined it is objective once you know your date of birth for an employee you can get the age of the employee but in terms of a categorical data when we're talking about age description so there's usually this interesting workforce demographics around uh baby boomers uh generation x uh millennial and generation z now when i start to category categorize the age of employees looking at all those ranges in terms of baby boomers are born in terms of the years of birth all of those classification is what we call qualitative is categorical in nature another interesting example of qualitative data is survey when you do a survey when i did a pool earlier on and everybody was giving their opinion based on that pool they are giving an opinion based on what they feel at that time is qualitative data in itself now some of the interesting sources of data which hr individuals must actually take in take note of is employee personal records uh talking about the employee personal record itself uh performance appraisals those are sources of hr data payroll records are sources employee engagement surveys hrs data uh talking about whichever software you're using for your data source uh, looking also at some non-HR sources, uh, non-HR sources talking about data you can get from finance and a few other things. Because the critical part about collecting some of this data is that you will use that data to calculate what we call metrics. And HR metrics is actually a measure of performance of the how the organization is performing in terms of HR initiative. So for example, if I take an HR metrics like turnover, for me to get turnover rate or what we call your labor turnover, I need the number, the workforce headcount, the numbers of individuals in the organization at the beginning of the period in view. And I also need the numbers of exits, meaning how many employees have exited the system within that period. When I now divide the numbers of people that have exist existed the system and over the total workforce, I'll be able to come up with what we call your work your turnover labor turnover that is a metric and you can only get that from talking about the sources of information of your hr data in themselves now if we're talking about types of analytics there are three major levels of analytics capability that organizations tend to go through and i'll quickly talk about them and i will go into the details of why we're doing this class today there are three levels one there is what we call descriptive analytics descriptive analytics has to do with insight into the past what has happened so if i check my phone right away and i check my battery level of the phone what i'm trying to see the battery level gives me a certain level and say that my battery level is 88 percent at the moment it is 88 percent if i go a little bit further into the settings of my phone it can tell me how long the 88 percent of battery power will last me that is a typical simple example of descriptive analytics when i draw a graph or I describe the age of employees in a simple bar chart or a column chart showing the numbers of individuals in certain age ranges, 
or the numbers of individuals that are millennials, the numbers of individuals that are baby boomers, that are generation X, and all, all the really various age description. What I am doing exactly is descriptive because I am describing my data. As a matter of fact, most of the work we do in HR in terms of creating HR reports are descriptive in nature descriptive because you are describing what is happening currently then you now go to the next level of hr analytics which is predictive analytics after you have understood what is happening you need to ask yourself the question what could happen you need to you want to understand the future you want to be able to use what you know to get what you don't know that's predictive analytics then the third level is prescriptive now after i've understood what has happened what could happen what should i do about it at that point what you're doing is called prescriptive analytics